Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is one of India's most distinguished Paratnatyam dancers. But she's as well known as a teacher to thousands of her young students who call her Akka as she is to audiences that she enthralls on stages in India and around the world. She's known for her unostentatious, serene style of dancing, just as it reflects in her own personality and style. I'm delighted to welcome Leela Samson. Thank you. Uh, unostent unostentatious and serene is how you've been described, your, 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 your dancing style has been described. And yet, in, 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 in many ways, that while that is the inner impulse that is reflected uh, in, in, in a personality and, and when we meet you and, 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 and spend time with you, uh, but isn't it in, in some senses antithetical to the whole notion of performance? It is. It is. I, I think you have to um, be a bit of a tomboy to be a dancer. You have to be very athletic, extremely upbeat, extremely uh, energetic, positive, almost, um, I would say even ambition is a good uh, uh, one, a better impulse, but not uh, if it overrides goodness or, you know, so I have a problem when it comes to that, but um, definitely you cannot be too peaceable if you're a, a dancer. There does come a stage later in life when uh, that uh, some inner philosophy uh, helps in terms of abhinay when you're dealing with the storytelling which is also exciting but there is a, a core center that needs to be very quiet to listen and I found that that's where the big difference uh, um, can occur between somebody who's only physical or only um, or where the ego is is carried by the body very strongly and a dancer who is uh, uh, able to subdue the ego and uh, people like like the great male dancers mm -hmm. in India you know Kelly Charan Mahapatra he was able to you to forget that he was male and old and with a bypass scar down his chest but he, when he played Radha it was that little girl and that was the overcoming of the ego and the inner that is a dream uh, you know, there's a great deal of uh, theorizing about the relationship between external posture and external gesture mm. and, in, and internal processes and, and, and what happens to the mind as, as a consequence. Right. I mean, that is the basis of uh, yoga and, and a lot of mind-body therapy right. uh, and mind-body techniques. Uh, how does that sort of work in dance in the sense that do you need to be, you mentioned goodness and you use the word yeah. ambition, do you need to be a good human being? Do you need to manifest goodness to be a good dancer? Um, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I don't know. Uh, we see a lot of dancers. We, we've uh, uh, seen a lot of egos. We've seen a lot of wonderful um, artists as well who rise above male, female, age, uh, body type and just enter the spirit of a role. And uh, we know what is good in that. But it comes from uh, some madness, it comes from some inner resources. Um, the bottom line, Rajiv, is that you can't help being who you are. Uh, it plays against you and it also, uh, and you have to deal with that. You've got to be able to overcome whatever negative uh, things happen in your career because of your nature. You have to also be able to deal with, um, you know, the fact that you, if you do idealize uh, somebody or something or philosophy, then you have to be able to make that part of your work. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a tough call because uh, the, uh, there are trends from time to time. There's what you, you know, what you learn, the learning processes, but that's nothing. That's just a base. After that, it's every lyric you pick up is actually marked by whether uh, it suits you or not, whether it. Uh, suits your type of delineation or not. So from, from that very, the kind of musicians you choose, the kind of um, literature you will or will not deal with. Um, and ultimately everything is beautiful and changes in the hands of different people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, uh, yes, it's got a lot to do with being a good person. I think you have to be able to live with yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, because uh, Rukmini Devi was very clear that 
education without culture, an understanding of your uh, culture is no education at all. At the same time, she believed that a philosophy was basic to an artist's journey. So and what so would be the, the, the philosophical framework for the artist's journey? I mean, we, and obviously when we say, talking about goodness, we're not merely talking about the notion of virtue, we're talking no. about something much larger yeah, than that. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, look, uh, for the artist in India, for instance, um, every day in a country like India, which has so many uh, religious forms, so many um, caste, class types, uh, the artist has to in some way um, and does represent the the literature of the country which is based, yes, on a particular, um, let's say, the Hindu motive. But um, you could take Buddhist text, you could take a Christian text, as long as you deal with it again in a way that it, the problem is the same in any of these. One. Yes, a universal one. Do you, can you rise above it and leave it just as a symbol? And not just uh, say it as it is, but uh, you know, interpret the symbol of anything written in verse. Uh, it's very, um, it's part of the process of learning and picking up and reading. And uh, so India is a large country, and there's uh, there are some very typical symbols, and we can get stuck in them, and also just typify them in some way. Just a small thing is enough to um, type you and uh, make you part of a particular cult. Or I think the artist in India is uh, challenged by that. I think you have to be able to rise above it. At one level, uh, Indian classical dance seems that much more obscure because it uses uh, symbols, it uses yeah. gestures. It's 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 not always literal. Yes. Uh, so it's 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 difficult to use. Uh, a, a conventional methodology of response and understanding it. Yes. And so there are obviously two kinds of response, those that are educated in the vocabulary and discourse of science and those that are purely, like me, responding from the gut. You know, I think everyone should respond from the heart, from the gut. Uh, I don't think there is uh, much in the other one, the, the one where you, there's a scholarly understanding of... Um, because, for instance, when I'm watching a dance, I'm not I'm not interpreting every mudra that she's doing. There's a lot of me flowing in my own directions as well when I'm sitting in the audience. And that's a Rasika's role because you're carrying uh, something with you. You have your own um, sanskar, your own journey. You have a large understanding of art, world art per se, or you have no understanding of it. You have only an understanding of Bharatanatyam and not, you're not appreciative of Kathak or whatever. Everyone in the audience is different. And they are a, on a journey that is separate and uh, at its own pace, other than the artist herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way it should be, and that's the, the flow of it. Uh, but um, I have a problem with um, you know, a lot of people who say that I can't appreciate it because I don't understand the, for instance, I don't understand the nuances of films either. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to, but I don't because I'm not educated in that. But um, I also react as as an artist. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's color, line, texture, a mood, everything is. Well, I mean, as as, as a filmmaker, I might argue that uh, you know, film is, is perhaps more literal, somewhat more. I hate to use the word gross, and and this is more 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 subtle, subtle and, and, mm. and less accessible. And so, in, in that sense, it might be, uh, you know, reaching. It's true. It's terribly <laughs> intricate, and it's very involved. It's mm -hmm. terribly ornate and very filigreed, uh, because there's tala and all that, and it's it's science and art and physics all meeting uh, in one uh, instance, and it really is a very complicated art. What form. gives it its it, it, its vitality, its relevance, and despite all the threat of globalization of culture, Americanization of culture, or whatever you, you know, you, you sort of your your pet hate is. Mm. You know, the fact is that, uh, you know, the number of students someone like you has uh, is, increasing. is growing. Uh, growing. There is a great deal of interest in art, uh, you know, dance survives, uh, despite oh, lots of, well, you know, yeah. despite lots of complaints about problems with money and sponsorship and what have you. But there obviously is uh, an interest, oh, is. a role, a place for it. What is this place? I think it's uh, intrinsic value. Uh, it is invested with um, a kind of uh, hardcore um, uh, you know, the, the style itself is very healthy. 
I can speak for all the Indian forms, but I can certainly say as far as Bharatanatyam is concerned, uh, it is satisfying, soul satisfying. Uh, on a physical level, that's one thing. Everybody knows you can go the physical level up to a point, and after that, there has to be the emotional thing. And then that's a lovely journey as well. And then you get through that, and it's very much like growing older with something, with yourself. Because then you enter another philosophic level and spiritual level, and it has scope for all of it. So, uh, uh, you know, we find that we are not only pressurized by students who want to learn here, and it's not parents anymore pressurizing their children. It's actually very little children saying to their parents, I will study Bharatanatyam and I want to study with so and so. So they're very clear headed, it's their call. Um, we also have a lot of students coming in from abroad, not only NRI kids but foreigners who have realized the potential of the style uh, either to use it as another, um, uh, you know, as another um, sort of uh, way of, way of interpreting their own modern dance forms or their own uh, music or, but it has, it's very balanced form and balanced really between physics and philosophy, between the body and the mind, between the emotions and um, it's really quite a quite an amazing journey. Uh, so the, the styles in India definitely have a lot to give to the world and we're seeing the result of that. It's very healthy all over the world. You're watching a conversation with Leela Sampson. Uh, Leela, the teacher, we'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Leela Sampson. Uh, we were talking about uh, your persona as a teacher. What does that process of teaching do for you uh, as, as a dancer, as a human oh, it's, being? Um, it, it's kept me alive in uh, many ways, uh, even as a dancer, I'd say. Uh, I relearned everything that I learned as a student when I actually taught it. And it's, it's relearning in it in a very internalized way because when you have to explain something to somebody, um, I think you only know then what that thing was all about in the first place. Um, and uh, that was a wonderful uh, discovery for me, I must admit. Um, most people today, most dancers today, once they've done the Arangetram, feel that they're equipped to be a teacher. But there are two problems here, and I must say this about dance teaching is that every dancer who wants to both be on stage and teach, uh, there's some, I, I, I think there is a dichotomy there. Because to be a dancer on stage, as you know, requires an ego. And uh, it's a very egocentric business. Um, so I think uh, to be a teacher, you, you have to be completely without that. And uh, you have to be giving. Uh, most soloists are not very generous people. Yeah. I don't think they'd part with their mm -hmm. tricks. So, uh, th th there is a problem in that I feel society has misjudged who the real teacher is. They should actually be going to people, sending their children to people who are not performers. The performing life is also a very tough one. It's, it's a one of traveling, of distances, of mm, great stress on the body and the mind. And the dancer uh, in India who is also married or been married or has a child or is, you know, whatever the case may be is under stress uh, with the family as well. So there's uh, not always a very happy person or Is a very balanced stayed, person. stayed single so that you could devote well, so much time and, and energy to this? To, to, to well, to uh, many people credit me with, <laughs> with, you know, having with a whole range of motives. <laughs> yes, uh, because I was so dedicated to my dance form. No, I don't think so. That I well, could I do a scandalous interview and ask you what the motive was? <laughs> well, I, uh, well, why I didn't marry is, is, is anybody's guess. I don't know. It just never happened. But uh, no, no sacrifice no on my part, design. I can tell you. No, no, no way. But uh, I'm, I must admit, looking at uh, my colleagues in the field uh, and they looking at me sometimes, uh, it is tough. It is tough, um, but a marriage is tough anyway. I mean, <laughs> or, or being single is tough. Mm -hmm. You know, whichever way you, whatever way you uh, decide, it's not always easy to match a career with, and a very involved career with family life. It's tough for a man as well. I mean, come on, 
uh, today's world where the man is taking equal uh, or sometimes does take equal uh, part in the f in the children or the f the house um it's equally hard to find time for what you know needs your time and what doesn't mm -hmm. and i think finding that balance is t as tough for me as it is for somebody else mm -hmm. so i don't think um you you studied with a with a with, with a great teacher and and you're doing a biography on her and we'll come to that biography in a minute but to what degree do you think you you consciously emulate the you know the, the techniques of teaching uh, that that Rukmani ji embodied or, or practiced? You know, Rukmani Devi was very. I mean, she was director of the institute by the time I was there, and she taught us personally, but only in passing in the dance mm -hmm. dramas and and did a lot of teaching through those very mm -hmm. few moments with each of us. It was a large institute with many people who wanted her time, and you know. But she was a teacher in many other ways. She taught you about life and about, uh, you know, uh, yourself and about. Uh, it was not only about the dance. But when she was the teacher of the dance, then she was very, very zeroed in on a problem that affected only you and your body. And she was able to remove that very clearly. And so she had a wonderful eye for detail. Um, uh, but you know, these, this is something I think that is either given to you or not. You have to be particular, but you can't, mm, you know, go on gnawing at a little child. You Would have your to. Your sort of ego allow you to tell to tell us that uh, you're given it. I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe I'm good at it, but and I enjoy it. I must. Uh, I must tell mm -hmm. you that that mm -hmm. I think if you enjoy something over, over many years, then you know if it's good for you, it's good for them. But um, it's a very delicate line between uh, you see the one problem we do have in the arts as in many other things is do you want to create clones of yourself or do you want to let the individual emerge sometimes the individual is mistaken for the ego and uh, if you encourage too much then you also have somebody who's a little monster but um, you also don't want the cloning of your personality which they would rather do which is easier imitation is so easy so it's a, it's a tough. Uh, it it's interesting. I like it. I, I enjoy it, and it's nice being able to mold these. Uh, mm -hmm. This biography that you're working on Rukmini Devi, and it's it's always sort of a question you ask an author that you know you're writing a biography. What's it going to say? You know, beyond yeah. recounting you know the details the or details aspects of her life, life yeah. what is a, what is a sort of a central new insight or, or an interpretation that? That you feel you're going to bring. I'm to this. afraid I don't. Uh, I don't know, Rajiv. I I, I don't have um, much more than an absolute uh, admiration and love for the person I'm writing about, which was my guru. Uh, I was very convinced I I mm -hmm. would like to do it. Actually, many other people were doing it, and um, and when she was still alive, she said, "This will never be written." Uh, of several people who were who had come mm -hmm. and were working with her in fact all the uh, mass of tapes that she did for her biographer uh, went with the biographer and i don't think that book was ever written uh, also a lot of photographs that were in the institute were also given away to somebody else so that also so i was left with very little in fact uh, to start work on but the next director, Shankar Menon, he was uh, extremely encouraging, and he said, "You know, you don't need anything, but the need to write it, because you know her. You just start." And so I've done it, and it's a bit of a fool's so paradise. What was, this, what was this need to write? Sort of an appreciation, and uh, to, to to help you appreciate her, to help tell the world that this was someone very special. Yeah, I think so. so. so I think so. She was she was extremely special, and uh, you know, I had done my time there, very satisfying years. Uh, then I left and I taught for about 15 years. Then when we went back, she was old and she was dying and she was, um, she needed some of us to come back. And it was at that time that I was going through her papers. I had taken a year off and I was going through her papers and I was absolutely fascinated. So I decided I'd do it. Started off and then realized what a terribly, you know, momentous task this was. You've done a number of uh, other books. How does sort of uh, scholarship sit with you? Not at all. I'm not <laughs> at all scholarly, uh, and I'm not an intellectual. I'm not very well uh, read either. It's just that uh, mm, 
I don't know, some people say she has the gift of the gap. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching a conversation with the dancer Leela Sampson. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to my continuing conversation with Leela Sampson. You know, I've just been th reflecting during the break on our uh, conversation, and, 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 you know, the phrase ego has come up several times. Mm. Uh, is that something that, that you, f you, you wrestle with, that, uh, that you feel uh, you're, you're, you're fearful of coming up? Because it, it's not apparent. It may well you. be, yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's just that um, I read a lot of philosophy, and I, I've, I've grown up with uh, a lot of philosophical discourses of various kinds. Uh, and the ego, of course, is the individual, which is very necessary. It's very important to know who you are and, um, you know, your capacity, uh, both in a negative way and a positive way, and to find the balance, obviously. But um, in the dance, it's even more highlighted. Mm -hmm. I must uh, say this, that as an artist, especially as a successful artist, you have an opportunity to, to you know, let that grow beyond... Um, and I've seen it, you know, I've seen, I've grown up, we started, all, all of us started together and we had a few seniors and people ahead of us and all, but it was horrible, some of the, some of the, mm, you know, very, very nice people I know who, uh, where the ego has overtaken them and they have a lot to be proud about, I must admit. It must be difficult to resist when yeah. you're in, 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 in an auditoria and in the, in the center of, uh, I don't know, you know, a, a thousand plus eyes for two, three hours. Yeah, very, very <laughs> uh, heady business. Uh, but in our, our art forms, that was never the aim. You know, it's not, you're not a star in a film. You, uh, your own journey is absolutely vital to performance. So it seems to me that if that is so, and that you can let that get away with it, uh, with you, then you're, you miss the point completely. Then there is no point in the art uh, in the first place. So learning that lesson is absolutely important, both as, uh, as an artist and as a person. Are you happy at the end of the day with that um, huge ego and, you know, um, and the terrible personality that comes with it? Um, I've seen artists who've been humbled uh, and all our very elderly artists were very humble people, mm -hmm. and uh, it was such a it's such a, a something that is so special to great art mm -hmm. that you know if you feel it's sort of very sad that in our time we've allowed that to mm, you know we did we didn't even we, it seems like we don't notice it we mm -hmm. are always uh, in awe of it but we don't seem to apply it to ourselves. Isn't there a fear that we might sort of end up? Uh, uh, romanticizing, uh, you know, the role of art, the function of art, the usefulness of art uh, in, 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 in a culture and in a society that we still feel is fundamentally disenfranchised, is, Absolutely. Uh, is, is poor. In fact, that's what, I, that's what makes me a little unhappy about the whole star system, is that it's almost at the cost of the millions of uh, people who are dying and who are suffering and, um, you know, who have uh, all those, you know, terrible things that are happening all over the world, but certainly in our country, how can you miss uh, seeing it and being conscious of it? Uh, humility is the only thing that, uh, you know, in some way gives you access to being one of them. And I, I think perhaps I'm overconscious of it. Uh, I couldn't, if I had a choice, I'd travel in a train and sit with somebody I don't know and, you know, just feel that I was one of them, then then uh, become a star or a, or a somebody important and become so alienated from them that, you know, uh, you're full of your own society and it's wonderful and that's important too, but mm, not at the cost of mm -hmm. being... So what, what, what value, I mean, I, I, it, 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 it's, it's probably an impossible question, but, but, you know, beyond the rhetoric of, you know, the refining of sensibilities and, and, and what have you, uh, what value does, does art uh, Well, it brings out the uh, best in somebody, mm -hmm. you know, if it's, if it's a child who's learning just for two, three months, it, it gives them a sense of poise. And what is poise if not the balancing of something within you, whether it's the physical or the mental or the emotional, uh, to bring everything into the center and to be able to, you know, find something there, some peaceful moment within you. 
Uh, so, and of course, it's very, very tough. This is the this is the role of the yogi, uh, and it's not rhetoric because when you when you learn to hold a note or you learn to breathe in pranayama very slowly, or you would or you just read quietly, or you play cricket with an absolute concentration, it's again that balance, finding that uh, center. And I don't think it's. Uh, uh, but you know, it's interesting. You ma you mentioned. Uh, uh, you know, cricket, an allusion to cricket. Uh, you know, a, a criticism often about our cricketers is that they don't know when to retire and they just keep playing till they're thrown out. Uh, so when is it time for a, a performer to stop performing? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. In fact, when I was younger, I, I used to say to uh, friends, you know, we should learn to get off stage before that happens to us. Um, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> well, many things. One okay. is if the body gives out on you and it's really, uh, you know, it's such a weight on the audience to even watch you perform. Uh, two, if, if your ego has become so big or you're so important that uh, the whole thing smacks of, of you as the person and not the style and not the, you know, what you're aiming at in the, in the verse chosen uh, for depiction. Um, so what does your inner voice tell you about that? Well, so plainly the audience has I decided can, can it's time you, to keep going. <laughs> no, I can tell you that my knees, my knees differ. They they say it's it's about time. Yeah, it's about time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the body, the body is. Uh, I've tried to keep it as uh, as much in trim as long as I do have a commitment on stage. I'd like it to be uh, something that is beautiful and something that holds its own. Mm, but I've also brought in a whole lot of youngsters onto the stage and given them uh, the platform and I hope um, uh, I'll be able to ease out without anybody noticing because uh, the point is really to, to see that you know you're only part of that river and that continuum as long as I think uh, you've trained a few people to I think that's an expression of, 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 of the egolessness that you aspire to but what about the you know the the the, uh, the non-performing bit and and, and and life in general yes. that uh, you know we have become a society that wants to keep sort of holding on not just to life but, but to youth to, to yeah. beauty to what have you uh, do you fear that 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 process of ultimate uh, I don't know disintegration giving in no giving, well, in. giving up no I don't at all I find every year getting more and more busy in other ways for instance writing is something that I think. I would do with a passion, and there are there are some there's l lacuna in some areas of our field, like in good music, good books for children, um, good teaching uh, establishments. We have to refurbish the ones that already exist, uh, you know, and methodology, uh, documentation. So there's a lot that I'd love to do: films uh, of uh, art and artists and styles and technique, and so there's a lot of lot of lovely areas which would require my kind of expertise mm -hmm. um, and I uh, I find uh, you know there's enough there for me to occupy myself very wholly with but I don't think I'll uh, I'll uh, miss it or mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank you very much Leela you're an inspiration thank you, thank you.